Geographers are scientists who study the Earth. But they do more than look at rocks. Geographers study the Earth's surface, the atmosphere, and the oceans. Geographers also study plants, animals, and people all around our planet. Geographers use very specific names or terms to describe similar places. Using terms makes it easier for people to locate and identify places all over the world. In this program, we're going to learn about the terms geographers use. Let's talk geography. The largest land areas on Earth are called continents. There are seven continents. Looking at this map, we can locate all seven continents. There's Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, Antarctica, North America, and South America. On each continent, we can find different landforms. A landform is any natural formation of rock and dirt that is found on Earth. Mountains are landforms. Let's talk about them first. Mountains are found everywhere on Earth. A mountain is any part of the Earth's surface that stands much higher than its surroundings. There are three different types of mountains. Fold, fault, and volcanoes. Each type is formed in different ways. To best explain how mountains are made, you need to understand that the Earth is made up of different layers. A solid core in the center, a liquid outer core, and then a mantle of heavy rock which is partially liquid. The part that we live on is the crust. Now, the Earth's crust is made up of large sections called plates. The plates float on the liquid mantle and are constantly moving. Sometimes, these plates press together. When they do, the pressure causes the plates to buckle into folds. That's why they're called fold mountains. Most of the great mountain ranges on Earth are fold mountains. The Himalayas in Asia and the Andes in South America are all examples of fold mountains. Now sometimes when the Earth's plates collide with each other, one plate gives way because the crust is weak. The place where the crust is weak is called a fault. That's how fault mountains are formed. The Sierra Nevada mountains are an example of fault mountains. Now sometimes, melted rock from deep inside the Earth, called magma, forces its way through the crust. We call this a volcano. When the magma oozes out of the Earth, we call it lava. As the lava cools, it turns to solid rock, and that's the beginning of a mountain. There are active volcanoes all over the world. One of the coolest land formations you will see on Earth is called a plateau. A plateau is a highland that is flat on top. Plateau in French means platter. A platter is flat. You can find good examples of plateaus in and around the Grand Canyon in North America. Some plateaus erode or are worn away and get smaller. We call these land formations mesas. In Spanish, mesa means table. Some mesas erode even more and become smaller. Those formations are called buttes. Butte is from the French word for mound. Buttes are still flat on top. Usually buttes stand alone, away from other highland formations. Between mountains are places called valleys. Like mountains, valleys are formed in different ways too. Some valleys were made by rivers. Rivers cut or carved deep into the earth over thousands and thousands of years. The valleys become deeper and deeper as the land is worn away. River valleys are V-shaped because rain runs down the sides and erodes the soil. Some valleys were formed by glaciers 
A glacier is a huge mass of moving ice. Many glacier valleys were formed during the Ice Age, almost 20,000 years ago. Giant glaciers moved across the earth and scraped long valleys out of the land. Glacier valleys are U-shaped because the moving ice filled the valley to the top and wore away the valley floor evenly. There's another kind of valley, too. It's called a canyon. Canyons are usually found in dry desert areas. Fast-flowing rivers carve out the land. But unlike other river valleys, canyons have steep sides because there is very little rainfall to wear down the walls of the canyons. A narrow, steep-walled canyon, or a part of a canyon, is sometimes called a gorge. There you have mountains and valleys, the highs and lows of land formations. Now it's time for a geographical fun fact. Do you know what country is also a continent? It's Australia. Australia is the name of the country and the name of the continent. You know, scientists have determined that some places on Earth have a particular kind of weather pattern called a climate. Weather, climate, and geography working together cause some places on Earth to be hot, while other places are very cold. And while some places on Earth are dry, other places are wet. Scientists have developed several geographic terms to describe these various areas of the world. The first term we're going to learn is grasslands. Grasslands are large, wide-open spaces covered with grasses. Savannas are grasslands that are found in tropical and subtropical climates, not far from the equator. There aren't many trees in most grasslands because there isn't enough rainfall for them to live. But there are all kinds of animals. Elephants and antelope live on African grasslands. Prairie dogs and buffalo live on grasslands in North America. And kangaroos live on the grasslands of Australia. Grasslands are found in North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, and Australia. Some places on Earth are so dry that even grasses can't grow there. These places are called deserts. When you hear the word desert, you may picture a very hot land filled with piles and piles of sand. But there are also cold, dry deserts too, like the Gobi Desert in Asia. In the desert, you'll find different kinds of plants and animals who have adapted and are able to live in the desert. Deserts are found in North America, parts of South America, Africa, Asia, and Australia. The coldest places on Earth are the polar regions. You'll find the poles at either end of the Earth's axis. Axis is the name we give to the imaginary line that goes through the middle of the Earth. The North Pole is at the northern end of the axis. It's located in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, surrounded by ice and snow, and is always frozen. The South Pole is at the southern end of the axis. The South Pole is on land, on the continent of Antarctica. It's always surrounded by snow and ice because it is so cold. As you move away from the polar regions, you'll enter another region of the world that is cold and barren. It's called the tundra. The word tundra comes from a Finnish word, which means barren land. Tundras were considered barren because there were no trees. But in the summer, it does get warm enough for mosses and a few wild flowers to grow. There are tundras in North America, Antarctica, Greenland, Europe, and Northern Asia. Next, let's explore the forest regions of the Earth. There are different kinds of forests. The first type of forest is a coniferous forest. A coniferous forest has trees with needle-shaped leaves and cones like pine, fir, and spruce. And because they stay green all year, the trees are also known as evergreens. 
Coniferous forests are found in the northern regions of the world, on the North American continent, parts of northern Europe, and northern Asia. Another kind of forest is called the temperate forest. Temperate forests are found where the climate is between hot and cold, and where there are four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. In a temperate forest, you'll find trees with broad leaves like maple or oak trees. These are the trees that drop their leaves in the fall, called deciduous trees. Some temperate forests also have coniferous trees mixed in. Many kinds of animals live in temperate forests. Temperate forests are found in North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Australia too. The third type of forest geographers refer to is the rainforest. Tropical rainforests only exist in very warm climates with lots of rain. The plants and animals that live in the rainforest have all adapted to the heavy rainfall and excessive heat. Tropical rainforest plants have very broad leaves and trees that grow tall above the dead shrubs and vines. A very dense rainforest is sometimes called a jungle. Tropical rainforests are found in South America, Africa, Malaysia, and Australia. There are also temperate rainforests. Temperate rainforests are made up of evergreen coniferous trees. There are also broadleaf deciduous trees. Animals that live in the temperate rainforests include black bears, river otters, and more. Temperate rainforests are found in North America, South America, parts of Europe, Asia, and Australia. Here's another geographical fun fact. Do you know the name of the largest tropical rainforest in the world? It's in South America. It's called the Amazon Rainforest. Did you know that over 70% of the Earth is covered by water? That's a lot of water! Geographers use lots of terms to describe water. Let's find out what they are. The largest bodies of water are the oceans. Actually, the ocean. Because all the oceans are really connected. But long ago, geographers divided up these waters into four separate oceans and named them. The Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Southern Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is the largest. It's nearly twice as large as the Atlantic and takes up half of the entire surface of the Earth. Geographers then divided the oceans into smaller bodies of water called seas. The Coral Sea, located just off the eastern coast of Australia, is really part of the Pacific Ocean. The Mediterranean Sea is a large body of salt water that's partially enclosed by land. Some waterways connect two larger bodies of water. If the passageway is narrow, it's called a strait. The Strait of Gibraltar connects the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. If the passageway is wide, it's called a channel. The English Channel links the Atlantic Ocean and the North Sea. This large body of water is called a lake. A lake is a body of water surrounded by land. Most lakes are freshwater, but there are a few that are saltwater lakes, like the Great Salt Lake in North America. Some water is constantly flowing. Geographers call them rivers. Rivers are always on the move, carrying water across the land. Most rivers begin in the mountains and end in the ocean. The place where some rivers end is called a delta. There are places on Earth where water covers land, but it's not deep enough to be a lake, sea, or ocean. We call those places wetlands. A wetland that has standing water and tall grass is called a marsh. 
a wetland with water and trees is called a swamp. A bog is wetland covered with plants. It looks solid, but it's bouncy if you walk on it. Lots of plants and animals live in the wetlands of the world. Some land areas are surrounded by water. Island is a geographical term used to describe dry land that is completely surrounded by water. There are islands all over the world. There's Baffin Island in Canada, and the Hawaiian Islands in the Pacific Ocean. There are also pieces of land that are not completely surrounded by water. They're called peninsulas. The state of Florida is an example of a peninsula. It's surrounded on three sides by water. Some pieces of land stick out into the ocean. They have a special name too, called capes. Two good examples of capes are the Cape of Good Hope at the southern tip of Africa, and Cape Horn, the southern tip of South America. Land that connects two larger pieces of land and is surrounded on two sides by water is called an isthmus. This is the Isthmus of Panama. Here's another geographical fun fact. Between the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, which is saltier? Believe it or not, the Atlantic Ocean is saltier than the Pacific Ocean. There are lots of cool places on Earth, and you know what they're called. Now you can talk geography.